plaintiffs, Curtis Elkins Jr. and his wife, Joanne, own a bar in Indiana, and they hired the defendant to work as a bartender. Joanne claims while working, the defendant served alcohol to a minor, and as a result, the bar was fined. They're suing because they claim the defendant agreed to pay off the fine, but has yet to do so. Defendant Jennifer Tucker says after she started working for the plaintiffs, she realized Curtis was an alcoholic who often made sexual innuendos to her and the customers. Jennifer insists she never served alcohol to a minor and she's countersuing the plaintiffs for a refund. Start with you all. I'm just going to start it out with something uh, slow, fast, but I'm from uh, Curly Joe's Bar and Grill, Portage, Indiana. Uh, I run uh, Curly Joe's Bar there. And uh, you're the owner or manager? She's the boss, and I'm the manager, <laughs> whatever you want to look at it, okay? Well, whose name is on the business? Who owns My it? My name is. Oh, good enough. Mm -hmm. But you know what it always says? That's right. Who's She's got the, the boss, money? The, the women got the, the money. Boss. That's right. Yeah. Okay? But like I'm going to tell you, well, I come in one morning, and she says, We hired a new employer. Mm hmm. Okay, and uh, her and the bar manager. Well, I got rid of that bar and uh, hired myself, but you know who gets the, the tongue lashing, don't you? <laughs> okay, so I tried to give it up. So I laid it over to the boss, okay? Plaintiffs Curtis Elkins Jr. and his wife Joanne hired the defendant to work at their bar and they're suing because they were fined as a result of the defendant serving alcohol to a minor. Go ahead. So um, in August of 2015, we were in need of a bartender, mm -hmm. and uh, one of our employees actually recommended Jen Jenny, we call her Jenny, mm -hmm. Jennifer for, um, for employment, and our bar manager interviewed her and she was hired. I didn't actually meet her till maybe a couple weeks after she'd been working, and. Um, and when I did, I welcomed her to our Curly Joe's family. We kind of look at it like that. We're kind of like cheers. Our bar is everybody knows everybody in there. And um, and I thought she was kind of quiet, very sweet girl, kind of young for the for this bar. But um, still, I thought she would be a good employee. Mm -hmm. um, little by little, little things were left undone. Maybe a counter wasn't wiped down or the floor wasn't swept and. Um, one day she came in and, and her eyes were really red and I was like, what is this? And, and um, she said that she had gotten really drunk the night before and she had just gotten contacts and forgot to take, and had taken her contacts out and threw them away and forgot that she had taken her contacts out. So she couldn't and see. so was digging in her eyes and I was like, so she's here the next day. So I don't know if she was still intoxicated at that point or not. And um, she had left a note saying that she had been arrested for theft. Um, and I just don't think Why that she Why did she took... leave you that note? She had, because she had to call in? that'll probably end up coming up a little bit later about why she couldn't she make some, some payments okay. on here because she had some bond issues to pay and okay. um, she things She was a good instead. worker other than that? Sounds well, like you had a couple of strikes so not, far. Not too bad. She came in a little bit late. Maybe her car wasn't, couldn't, wouldn't start or had to call off for going to the doctor or take care of her dad or... But at that point, I think she was only working maybe one or two days a week. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know. I go to I go to work every day. I, I it's hard for me to call off, but um, okay, let me hear from work. her. Yeah. Give me some background, ma'am. I started working for them in October, and soon after or August, soon after I started working for them, I realized that Curly had a drinking problem. He would make sexual innuendos and stuff like that to the me and the customers that would come in, and I didn't find he thought it was funny, and he would just kind of shrug it off and be like, "Ha ha, I'm joking," but we really didn't think it was that funny. So, um, how did things go other than that at um, the workplace? I worked, like I started out one day a week and I went on to two days a week eventually. That's all I ever worked. I had another mm -hmm. job that actually paid Got my it. bills. Um, Ma'am, did you know that? Because oh, you yeah. suggest the woman didn't have good work ethic. You say you have to come to work every day. Well, she has to come to work to two places. I was work at that point I was working six days a week. There wasn't really and any And two different room. jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, 
he actually had told the customer's wife that he was cheating on her with another woman, which was never true. And we had lost a lot of different customers because of stuff like that, just him being curly. You ever heard any of this? Drug drip, what? <laughs> Did you hear this? Heard it now. No. no. <laughs> okay. And of these um, things that she says was occurring, sounds like she's alleging you were being fresh from time to time with um, employees or customers and who knows, and no one found any uh, charges against him for no, sexual I just, harassment. I brushed it off and ignored right. it because, I mean, most days when I'd come to work, he was already there. I never really saw Joanne, hardly okay. ever. I never, we contacted Other than that, you, uh, you all had a good working relationship? Yeah, it was okay other than that. Plaintiffs Curtis Elkins Jr. and his wife Joanne hired the defendant to work at their bar. And they're suing because they were fined as a result of the defendant serving alcohol to a minor. So why are you all suing her today? Um, in April of 2016, we received a complaint from the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission stating that we had a violation of someone served a minor. There would be a $1,000 fine attached to this someone serving a minor. Um, I look back at the schedule to see who had worked that day. It actually happened in January, on January 18th of that same year. Now, we didn't know about it until April 15th. We had just sent in to have our liquor permit renewed, which is $1,000 to have that renewed. But they're not going to even keep the process going until you pay this $1,000. Mm -hmm. So we had to pay for that $1,000. They did, according to this, they dropped the um, loitering minor. And it was actually a excise officer who came in with the minor. So it was a, an excise check on the business. And um, so my husband asked Jenny if she had... Well, I guess you probably want to tell him because well, I wasn't on that one, but yeah. About this, she says, I don't know anything about it. I says, well, right here is the paper. Right. It's got your name on it. You don't know nothing about it. I, Let me see the I, paper with sure. your name on it. I called the um, Alcohol and Tobacco Commission, and and okay. here's also. What did they tell you? Well, right there, they said that what time they came in and that the bartender served her, that Jennifer Tucker served the minor, mm -hmm. and then here is the ticket from that day which is signed by Jennifer Tucker as well. Okay, let's see So it. it wouldn't have been that big of a surprise. And you all ask if she would take responsibility for Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And what did she say? Um, I made out a couple different payment plans and um, she had agreed to the option of paying $300 down, $60 a week. And um, she made a payment of $60 and a few more on top of that and then all right, let's see what you have. Ma'am, why don't you tell me about this? I, that day that it happened, an excise agent did come in and I did mm -hmm. not serve the minor. They said that the bar was getting a ticket for loitering of a minor. If I would have served a minor, I would have gotten a ticket as well and I would have had to pay $500. And I have my liquor license right here that I printed like two weeks ago. Where that are you has getting your uh, no information about you would have had to pay $500? Um, my lawyer. I talked to him after I have originally agreed to pay them because I thought that what I was supposed to. And I talked to my lawyer and he told me that I wasn't responsible because the bar got a ticket, not me. I have no violation on what my is liquor license. you showing me, ma'am? And I've called the alcohol, that's my liquor license. Online you can put in the number and it pulls up your liquor license and it'll tell you because that's how employers look you up. Okay, and, and the say, violation was January when was the violation here? January 18th. Of 2016? And 16, correct. And the... Uh, it doesn't have the date on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. But, it said issue oh. date of September 15th. Yeah, but I'm saying if I would have gotten a violation, it, it would be on that yet. piece of it paper. It might not have been on here yeah. yet. No, I called and everything. I don't oh, have a that ticket. Doesn't, you calling is not enough. This shows well, and this I don't, doesn't show. I've called the alcohol tobacco Ma agent. I just told you, calling okay. is not evidence. This is evidence, and this shows that you contacted them September of 2015. That's when I was issued my license. Okay, so why don't we have a date on when this occurred? Because I just printed it from my phone. That's all right, all but it do. should have a date saying that. You printed this from your phone? I No, I looked it up from my phone and emailed it. All right, and how would you prove it? The email. Okay, good enough. We're going to um, we're going to go ahead and adjourn until she has the response okay. from the uh, and the date.
from the email. She says it exists, so we'll see. Uh, court is adjourned until we get this email that shows the date. Plaintiffs Curtis Elkins Jr. and his wife Joanne hired the defendant to work at their bar. And they're suing because they were fined as a result of the defendant serving alcohol to a minor. Stay seated, everyone. This court is back in session. All right, ma'am. So you say after the ticket for the liquor violation serving a minor. The ticket um, that I never got, yes. Mm -hmm. That you never received one. And you said you were able to get a copy of your record, which mm -hmm. doesn't reflect it. And that doesn't show the date, but you say you have evidence of the date in which you were cleared of any violations on your mm -hmm. uh, license. Let's see that then. The date that I looked it up is right there. All right. Properties. All right. Yep. August 25th, 2016. That's when she requested and it said no violation. Thank you. And the date of... The issue of this ticket was, what day was this issued again? I can't. January 18th. January 18th. Mm -hmm. So between January 18th of 2016 and August 25th of 2016, she had no violation and the assumption would be if she had one that was issued in January of 16, it would certainly be listed by August of 16. Um, and I'm looking at the report. I explained, this is from the officer. They say they explained that the premise would receive notice of a violation. You and have any? Curly was at the bar that day when it happened. He was at the bar that day when it happened. Uh -huh. He just doesn't remember being there, but he was there. But do you assume you did it and perhaps they didn't list it? No. That's the question, did you do I it? I didn't serve the minor. He was sitting at the bar, I had a full bar. By the time I made it back to that location, she said he had been sitting there for too long, hence the loitering of a minor. They didn't issue her a violation, And folks. I spoke to my lawyer, and he told me that it's not my responsibility to pay their ticket. If I would have got a ticket, it would have been, I wouldn't have made them pay my ticket. My current boss told me the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's my understanding of the law with regard to liquor licenses. However, they're suggesting that you agreed to contribute to it. I, to payment of it. I agreed at mm -hmm. first because I didn't know my rights. And after okay. I talked to my lawyer, that's when I stopped paying. Because And that's your refund to... you're asking for, yeah. for $240? Mm -hmm. Because you paid unknowingly. You mm -hmm. paid under the assumption that what your boss told you was true. The way they worded it made it seem like I had to pay mm -hmm. it. I didn't know if they were going to fire me. I, okay. I, I honestly didn't. You know. have something in writing. They present it to you. Mm -hmm. Let's see it. What do you all say to this? Mm -hmm. A bar and inanimate object cannot serve a minor. I understand. A person has to tell the that. law that because the law is that the establishment <laughs> is responsible. Go to your legislature. Well, you uh, tell them that and see how that works out for you. <laughs> In the meantime, I am going to conclude that she is not responsible. Secondly, she says she paid under the assumption that she would be responsible until she spoke with someone who told her differently. And whomever told her differently told her right. She is not responsible. You all are. Um, her refund is granted for $240. And your case against her is dismissed. Have a good day, folks.